What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. It feels good to say that I've been super busy in my own time. I've been moving house so I've not had a lot of time for content and video creation which has been a real shame but there has been some news around Rugby 22 and of course I can't leave that alone. I've got to make a video about that. So Rugby 22 have released uh, as of a couple of days ago actually. I've, I've completely missed this. Uh, I've been far too busy to uh, keep track of everything. That they have come out with some new patch notes for this game. Now sure by now a lot of you will have already seen them but I thought today it would be fun to go through them all, see what they've actually implemented and see whether or not these changes actually make the game any better. So we'll go through all of the updates one by one, pick out some of the key ones, just check that they've actually implemented them and then we will play a game and go over everything that they said to test or not whether they've made the game better or potentially completely broken it which is always a lot of fun to go over. So starting out on the set one of three patch notes they've released, which is kind of mad to be fair. They've they've really uploaded a lot of new ones. So starting off here with the licensing, uh, they've updated some of the team rosters, including uh, Paolo Garbisi going into Montpellier, uh, Eben Etzebeth, Charles Olivon, and uh, Cheslin Colby are now in the Toulon side. Of course, they finally added in Cheslin Colby, the man whose face is on the front of the box art they have for this game. They finally added him into the game two months after release. That's always very nice of them. Uh, and then finally we've got some other players there going in there. Teddy Tomat, which a couple of people also mentioned not in that Racing team. Um, and a couple of other players. So nice. We can check that out at some point. Um, in the URC, they've added some more players as well. Mornay Stain is now in the Vodacom Bulls. We've got Josh Navidi and Thomas Williams in Cardiff Rugby. Of course, not Cardiff Blues anymore. Uh, Hamish Watson, Nick Haining, Wow, were all these players just missing, or is this a couple of transfers? There's so many players. Zander Fagerson, Matt Fagerson in Glasgow, Jack Conan, Jordan Lama, Harry Byrne now in Leinster. Um, Elton Yantes is now in the Emirates. Ty Byrne in Munster. Liam Williams, halfpenny from uh, in the Scarlets. Oxen Shea, Mabonaby, Sia Khaleesi. Right, so they've now added a bunch of of the South African players in, which is really nice. So all these international South African teams, there's obviously been a bit of a switch. I'm just gonna quickly check in the background here, just to make sure they haven't actually got this team licensed officially, because uh, they've now got all of the players, uh, doesn't look like it. So, but there's now the opportunity to actually make our own uh, South Africa team, which could be a lot of fun to do at some point. Um, they've added also a couple of other ones in there. Uh, Benetton, which they've misspelled and called it Eniton. Wonderful. <laughs> their, own, their own patch note that I've got here. They uh, didn't even get that right. A uh, bunch of more players. So, nice that they're updating the player rosters. I mean, we've been calling for it for about a month, so it's nice they finally added that in. Um, some players have been updated. Uh, the nationality of a couple of players has been changed um, to, I assume, their correct ones. Um, position, Mike Lowry, uh, who had a good game in the Six Nations last round. Um, is now a fullback as his primary position and uh, second fly half as his second position. So a couple of switches around just to players. Generally in teams, nice to see. Um, there are quite a few players that don't have all their correct positions, which is a bit of a shame. It's nice to uh, to cover some of those things. So a lot of new stuff to go over in terms of the uh, the teams. So we, uh, we might have a quick look at that very quickly now, just to make sure these players are actually in. I assume if they've got one, they've got all of them. Let's start off with the, uh, the Toulon, which of course was uh, what a lot of people were talking about, was no Chesling Colby. Let's just check it out. I can see Charles Olivon in there. And uh, we've got Colby. So there is a potential here to genuinely start making a, a South African team. The only problem is we're going to need to buy all the various packs uh, of all the South African club level teams rather than just the international pack, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I assume the rest of them will be fine. If we've got two or three of them there, it's more than likely that they've uh, they've added the rest of them in. In terms of patch notes, two then, uh, starting off at the top. Uh, goal kick has been added to the tutorials um, in the kickoff menu. Okay, interesting. So it's going to be going over a bunch of uh, training stuff, maybe. Um, improvements on all game plans, such as uh, trajectories after a ruck, first pass, anticipation issue of the defensive team. Yes, the, the defensive team was very quick off the line, so I'm hoping that's what it's sort of slowing down, is that blitz defense maybe a little bit. Um, the two game plans related to extraction by the number eight, these two not displayed anymore if they cannot be used. Right, wonderful. They were barely usable anyway, so hopefully that will have changed. Um, improvements on players. Trajectory when receiving the ball after the ruck, mall or scrum. Yeah, one thing that happened when the game originally released was your scrum half used to pass the ball diagonally 
to your own player and it was like they were passing backwards which was really nice and then in the last update they did they made the ball pass flat no matter what and your player almost had to run onto the ball and it made it really hard at some point that the defensive press would actually shut you down way quicker than you wanted them to so hopefully that's what they mean by that being changed Improvements of the attacking team positions during a kickoff, so maybe just quicker off the line, put a bit more pressure on you. Improvements of the bomb kicking strength during kickoff, okay, so try and get a little bit further maybe. Uh, improvements on jackling during a ruck, slightly larger time frame. Vibration feedback when used, can now occasionally use it and commit foul. Okay, so yeah, you can push a little bit too much and actually give away a penalty there, it's nice to see. Improvements on the, to the grubber kick. The ball should now be more often playable on the ground. Yeah, I really struggled to work out the basis of how the grubber kick worked. The best way I could do it was when the prompt appeared to rapidly mash the button. And some players would do it. Normally only wingers or fullbacks could do it. Hopefully they will have uh, actually been able to sort that out. Um, the gauge has been added to clarify the kick intensity. Um, interesting. That'll be definitely one I'll try and look at in game. Online major minor corrections improvements also added the triangle shaped feedback following the ball carry. Oh, I didn't even know that wasn't a thing <laughs> in online. It's so hard to play an online game. Anyway, um, in terms of the graphics and the UI related to the addition of the grubber gauge, HUD related to all types of open kick have been updated uh, to be more cohesive. Wonderful. So there's probably going to be a little bit more now around kicking. Looking forward to checking that out. Fixed an issue with the kick input display when playing with the TV side camera. I have to say I play only with that camera and I've never really noticed that issue before so that'll be interesting to see what, what that issue has actually fixed. Fix the issue preventing from restarting the match when doing it during the scrum cinematic. Okay, didn't know that was a thing. Slight improvements on grass uh, unusery which, should have, which could appear too often. To be honest, I really feel like I've seen that a lot less since the game originally came out with all the sort of mud patches and stuff around. Fix bugs. Fix some offside, not whistled by the referee. Yeah, nearly every time the AI is offside, it's never picked up by the referee. Fixed an issue where some failed tackle attempts where the player falls down and takes too much time to stand up. Okay, I have actually had one issue more recently where there was a player actually got tackled and then for the rest of the game they just remained tackled on the field, which was a weird one. Fixed an issue related to players' positions in pods which are which were going to going too much forward. Uh, not too sure about that one. Fixed a bug about defensive players moving backward, then going after the ball carrier. Yep, I definitely experienced that one. Fixed some issues with the ball with the bounce of the ball after the kick. I mean, I really want to see if they change the way the ball bounces. It does bounce incredibly predictably forwards from almost any kick, which is a bit of a shame rather than sometimes getting a nice bounce into touch. It can just bounce completely along the touch line and not manage to bounce its way into touch. Um, it fixed some issues with the commentaries played at the wrong time. Yep, that definitely occurred. Fixed an issue occurring after doing trainings in career mode, which was resetting the user's options to default. I have absolutely experienced that. I'm glad they've managed to change that one entirely. Um, something quickly just to actually have a look at to see in the career section to see if they've changed. Uh, my team has dropped down to, uh, to 81, so I'm going to guess the answer to this is going to be no. I have noticed every time you do a training, your entire team relationship uh, tends to reset in loads of different areas. So if you can see now on the left-hand side, my entire team cohesion is all red uh, after I've done a training. Apart from some positions remain green, even though I've played with this team now for five, six, seven seasons, they still remain red after a training session, which means you have to play a couple of games to get that back up to green for some reason. And then the final set of patch notes, the one I'm most interested in, changes to specifically consoles, which uh, has a lot of very interesting things. Reduce the duration of scrums. Um, I don't know how you reduce it. It's up to you whether or not you hold the ball in the scrum. So going to be interested to see how that works. Reduced the team booster prices. This was a thing that was brought up in my 1 million point pack opening. A lot of people dropping down in the comments. I even had Eric send me a couple of screenshots where he was noticing it playing on the PC that his packs were massively changed cheaper than mine. We're talking up to 50% cheaper than the packs I had, which means I'm kind of wishing I'd re refrained from doing that million point video till this patch had come out. For some reason on consoles, they didn't do that. Um, and they do actually say in this patch notes that these were already applied to the Steam update. Why they've separated these out, I really don't know. Feels very unfair to console players like myself if people on PC are able to get that way earlier and way better than me. That doesn't really feel that fair. Um, they fixed the following missions, which were not progressing as they should. One by one, last one standing, and disloyal. I've noticed way more 
than just those three. Um, I've noticed this attack one has stopped working, which relates to your attack bonus points that you get when you're playing in the career mode. The defensive one is hard because I just never really lose a game, so I'm never really sure if that one works or not. Um, which other ones didn't I have working? Yeah, the one by one was the one they mentioned. The last one standing they've mentioned there. Um, I think they are all working. I've also never been able to do this because injuries just don't sustain in the um, the normal league. The league one for me has stopped working as well, which was a bit of a shame. Um, or alone against all has stopped working for me. Disloyal is the one they claim to have fixed, and I think best of the best doesn't work either so I think there's a good three or four more they also need to fix which haven't been addressed yet and they fixed an issue in the stadium three ripple stadium when playing in top 14 or pro d2 ads um, white lines are now correctly displayed so in certain game modes that the, the white lines on the pitch weren't displayed I really wish I'd seen that um, with fusion cards which were still sorted using their previous score instead of that score okay that's a bit of a minor fix and with the text of two events which are now displayed when relating their name instead of the description text. Yeah, there was a couple of issues they've had around events. They've changed these an awful lot in the background to try and make these a little bit better. Um, I do wish they had more events. Some of these events, like you see on the left here, this annual event, is play three games. And it is over a month long to do that challenge. I did that within an hour. <laughs> um, of this coming out and I've not had another challenge and they got this little jewel. I really wish this challenge menu was increased to be maybe 10, 20 different challenges that if you wanted to just sit down and do challenges you would have way more content to be able to follow. And then finally on the PS5 they've apparently fixed some rare occurring crashes which means nothing how vague and how nothing considering how many tweets and stuff I have been sending at these guys over at Rugby22. They have been quite bad actually in terms of responding generally to the uh, to the player base to, to allow us to get a bit more transparency on some of the game. Um, but that's nice though so we'll check quickly out the, the booster packs just to make sure this is actually a thing. Have they now reduced the team packs? Uh, yes massively. Yes, the New Zealand pack's now about 100,000, France about 100,000. If you remember in the million point pack video, they were nearly double that, which was just insane, especially when you want a couple of players. Um, if you're after some very specific players anyway, it's it's much, much harder to do. I personally am going to pick up a, a couple of New Zealand packs just because there's still a couple of New Zealand players that I actually want. And uh, seeing as I've still got over 100,000 left, I'm going to buy a Wales pack. Why not? That'll be a lot of fun. We'll open them super quickly and then we'll jump into a game. Um, did I manage to get... Reese Zamet? No, I didn't. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get Reese Zamet. I want him for my career team. Um, Brayden Eno, Hoskins Tutu, Akira Iwani, Finley Christie. I'm really after Bowden Barrett. I kind of want him as my fly half in this one. Um, an awful lot of duplicates I am noticing from these team packs as well. Um, I seem to be getting an awful lot of the same players. I think I must have opened about five of the New Zealand packs now. And I've probably got overall about ten different players. I've had Aaron Smith about four times out of the five packs, which is kind of annoying. I kind of wish they'd reduce the duplicate rate down a little bit. Um, so let's jump into a quick match. Um, I better just check my settings to make sure we're all on that. After they've just said it changes everything, we'll move that up to pro. We'll play a five-minute game. Everything else is on. We'll jump into a quick game and we can test out some of the new functions. So seeing as we've got some uh, some new players now, let's jump over. I'm going to go uh, over to the French team. Let's go as too long because there's now a couple of uh, player changes made there. And we'll go up against some of the URC. We'll add one of the uh, the the South African teams that they said a lot of people are playing for now. So the South Sea Sharks have quite a few new players, so that'll be fun. Uh, we'll chuck them in red. Why not? Uh, red and black. That makes it a little bit easier. We'll jump into a stadium. And we'll get kicked off and check out some of these updates. Alrighty guys, here we are. We'll jump into the game. We've started out with uh, Carbonell. Let's uh, kick this down a little bit. Let's see how different the game feels. Been a couple of days, well, been a, well over a week since I last played this game. So we'll check out uh, the difference in the feeling of the game. First of all, I'm already noticing a couple of frame rate drops here. Um, I mean, they said they reduced that ruck time, didn't they? That ruck felt like it took for, a, for a, quite a while here. That's a nice little offload. We'll just get some more players in here. Let's spread our attack a little bit wider. We seem very, very tight here. Let's just get this ball along. Now, it's looking a lot more like the passing is actually headed backwards. Which is nice, not just flat, but they're actually specifically passing backwards in the line. Let's just check here. Yes, it's definitely got a bit of a diagonal going backwards, which is nice. In the last update they did, for some reason the players changed and were passing completely flat. 
um, which meant that the defensive line definitely pressed up way too quickly. So that's nice to see. We're going to try and check out some other stuff, of course, as we're going along here. Let's try and get a little ball out wide to Cordin. Let's get over for a try. Um, it looks a little bit more blurry than I'm used to. I don't know if they've changed any of the graphics and stuff. Of course, these graphics tend to look better in these sort of more cinematic shots, by all means. Um, but it does look... Let's have a look at the grass wear as well. I mean, the hair flickering seems to be back as well, which is interesting. Let's just see if we can kick this one in. The hair flickering is, is actually quite bad here. Um, depending on what device you're watching it on. Maybe oh, push no, that is wow, did that miss? Short. Wow. <laughs> Carbonell's kicking is apparently rated much lower than I anticipated there. Right, let's skip through. Let's see what they do in terms of this kickoff. Wow, I mean, I'm just going to let that go completely He's short. For the ball. This is on pro difficulty, isn't it? I think I put it on pro difficulty. That was a uh, an improper kickoff. Nice and easy. Let's do a scrum. Let's do a scrum because they said they've reduced the scrum times. Let's see how they what they mean by that. So, crouch. That seems perfectly normal. Speed. Bind is the same. Set is the same. We'll put this in. Sarah. I'm going to specifically not drag the scrum out. I'm just going to play it. Ah, so if you don't manually push the ball forwards now, they actually will um, will, uh, will just remove the ball for you. That bomb has definitely improved in terms of distance. Uh, overall, that was, that was much further. Let's see if we can just do that again. Normally, this would be very vertical. Instead, it looks like it's going much further along, which is nice. The catching mechanic looked a little bit better. I mean, that's something that's going to have to be uh, play tested a little bit just to see the the ability to, for your players to catch the ball. It still doesn't allow you to just catch the ball very easily if you um, if you get sort of uh, charged down a little bit. Let's go for a Villiers one. Let's do it again. Let's try and chase it. The kick's recovered. Okay, so it looks like we're not just going to catch the ball from anywhere, which is nice. Lucan Yuan, new to the game, but uh, picks up a nice little yellow card. So definitely seeing a couple of changes here. Uh, we'll just go for a tap and go quickly just because we want to uh, to test out a couple of these things. So let's um, let's see if we can move along here. We'll get towards the line. Now, I do want to test to see if people are still going to run in front of my kicker if I go for a drop goal. Let's test it out. Sarah passes the ball. It still looks like my players are running towards my kicker for some reason when I'm going for that drop goal. I don't know why this was ever done in the game. For some reason, people literally like run in front of your kicker. It does lead to an awful lot of offsides for some reason. Um, wow, again, they've kicked it short. Um, I don't know if that's an AI issue or if there's maybe very strong wind that I'm doing. Let's make them redo the kickoff just to see again. Okay, they changed the depth that time. It's strange that on pro difficulty they messed up two specific ones. Um, hopefully that's going to be uh, a bit of a rare issue. I don't want to be seeing that every game. Let's see if we can just get this ball out a little bit. Carbonell. Oh, wow, that's a good interception there. So, yeah, it looks like they've changed the passing mechanic actually quite a bit, which is nice. I, I like that because I was struggling a lot. Especially when you're doing a lot of games in a row, if you're doing the career mode, uh, you can find that you're... D having those that passing issue where the defense outrushes you can get very annoying after three or four games in a row so nice to see some changes there let's just try and get along here and see what i can do that looks like it's almost oh well we'll have a touchdown <laughs> good defense from the uh, from the sharks they're not letting me get out let's start off the second half and the second half of the match. That's a better kick for them. Right, I really want to test this uh, this grubber kick. I just need to try and get oh, a bit of a bit of room together. Right, we've actually got an injury. Here we go. Let's try and get this ball along. I actually feel like they've slowed down the passing a little bit. I feel like I'm not able to throw it out quite as quickly as before, which is nice. Um, you still can't tackle with the same player that kicked the ball. That was a thing in Rugby 20, and I don't know how they've never fixed that. Catch the ball. Terrible all right, these guys, oh, they're all doing yoga. That was nice. I'm so glad that they, my players decided they'd had enough. Right, we just about saw the bar. They're really hard to pick out the uh, the, the kicking bar the that actually appeared the on the ground that time. So let's see if we can try and use it from here. So it looks like as you're charging towards the ball, you're going to be able to charge the kicking bar before you actually get to the bar, the ball, which will be nice. So let's, let's just drop this in. Sarah, and we can in. pull this back. Right, let's see if we can. Uh, actually, doesn't seem to be anyone on that uh, really on that left wing. Let's go for a crossfield kick alive. here. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, a bit too in far. Touch. I feel like my player wasn't really running at, at full speed the then after that ball, out. which was a bit of a shame. But I did actually notice the 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 bar. I don't know if anyone saw it on it's the on the kicker. The my kicker actually also has the same bar there, 
as opposed to it just being kicking until it, the, the bar turns red. You've actually got a... Oh, there is even a bar in the uh, in the rucks, which I've not noticed. Oh, no, that was just to show if you're, if you're coming in from an offside position, I reckon. Right, come on, let's see if I can get along here. All right, apparently I can kick it straight into someone's hands if you get tackled in the animation. Uh, quite hard to uh, to get that one down. I have to say, I feel like the AI is really not putting me under a great deal of pressure here, considering this is pro. Um, they're winning a couple of good rucks there, which is nice. I'm glad to be seeing that. I just want to try and get round the back a little bit. Maybe I should have actually played it on a slightly easy difficulty just to uh, it's a ruck. just to Huge test out some of these new features. I still can't choose the player, which is really annoying. Sometimes I drag the pass bar really far over. And yet, he it feels like it passes to the guy who's two feet away from you, as opposed to clearly the guy oh, I've, I'm selecting as passing. There. Again, Terrific when this game came out Surat. originally, I felt the, uh, the the pass system worked flawlessly, the and, and then got changed possession. in the last update to uh, to not be the best representative of the really player actually trying to pass to. to Let's try and get a bit of a charge here. I don't think I've actually spread my defence that wide. But I feel like there's an awful lot of gaps in my uh, my defensive it looks line like here. Try something special here ben, something magic. Let's just try and get it. a really turnover. Come on, there we go. Exactly. Right, we're going to him. Look how deep Good my player was there. Right, here we go. Okay, so it's not going to be quite as easy, easy to do, uh, but I did. I am seeing the, the bar. It's going to be a whole new mechanic to, uh, to try and get used to. I think here. we've got a couple of new uh, new players coming off and on. They've decided to go with a seven-player lineup. Let's see if the uh, the AI is still going to fall for the uh, for the lineup. They still Great fall for the lineup pretty uh, pretty clearly there. Sarah finds his mate. Yeah, that's what I meant there. With the the player runs like almost offside just, just to make sure that you can't uh, you can't get there. Right here we go. Grubber kick on. You choose the kick before. Okay, it's not... Hey, you know what? It's not terrible. Felt a little bit clunky. Again, it's the first time I've got to experience it, so maybe there's something there. So you're almost charging up the bar as you're running, and then when they get to the ball, it, it, the, it looks like the ball had to be in a realistic position for your player to actually kick it on, as opposed to they just naturally bounce it on. That's fine for me because you can still mess it up. It looks like you can kick it too hard, see about the which actually now. might mess up your kick, might make it go in a different direction, might make your player overrun and miss the kick entirely. I like what they've done there. There's been some nice changes. I feel like Carbonell's yes. kicking is awful in this game. I feel like the distance he's getting on these kicks is, is really, really bad. Um, but it is a win. It looks like those mechanics are added in. Overall, that game felt uh, nice. The SP rewards are still low. Which is a shame, um, but now they've made the the, the, the price packs different. Um, I feel like it's going to make it a lot more feasible. The idea of earning three thousand SP points for a single game to buy a two hundred thousand point pack was outrageous. You needed to play 30, 40 games to buy one pack, whereas now you can actually buy um, you know them an awful lot cheaper, which will help out in the long run of this game, especially if you're trying to retain players. I feel like the grind was real in order to do it. Oh, we've also completed a mission. Let's just see if any of our missions... I don't think I did anything particularly to uh, to chance it. Um, I probably should have tested some of them. I completely forgot that was a, uh, a thing. Any of these ones also updated. Disloyal uh, just jumped up from being zero to uh, a whole bunch. So, okay, we'll take that because why not? Nice and easy. Um, and I'll do a bit more playtesting of some of the other ones to uh, to test out whether some of these work. I still need to do some of these championships. I've just been doing so much with the actual career that's been uh, totally different. We'll open that pack up and uh, we'll call it a day there, guys. I'm sure there's no one in here that's going to be added to my team. Absolutely not. But now that we've got a lot more of the, uh, the South African internationals, there may be the chance here to actually build a South African team, which would be a lot of fun. Something I can actually build towards now, especially if we get around to some of the... Uh, the Southern Hemisphere games, especially when it gets around to maybe the World Cup. If there's not a new rugby game come out, at least that way I can include the South African team. Uh, but I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. We've gone over a whole bunch of the patch notes and played a little bit of a game testing out all the new functions. Let me know what you guys have thought of the updates. Have you experienced any issues, anything wrong since the update? Personally, I didn't find a great deal of issues in that game. A couple of frame rate drops, but that can maybe just be seen in the, uh, in the future to be fixed. Or it could be the fact that my console hasn't been on for a good, like, two weeks because I've been busy moving house. But I'm really interested to know, so make sure you guys do drop down in the comments your thoughts on the updates as they come out. Of course, I'll try my best to keep up to date with all the latest uh, updates that come out around this game. Just give me a bit of time until I'm actually in my new house. But I hope you all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.